Good afternoon and welcome to Moments with Melinda. I am your host, Melinda Moulton. And today I have Jennifer Saccaro, the head of school of Vermont Academy as my guest. Jennifer, thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. I'm really excited. I've known you now for quite a while. And, um, and I've always been so intrigued about your life and your work and, um, and about Vermont Academy. And so I really am so honored to have you with me today on Moments with Melinda. So let's start, let's start right off. I, I, I would love to know a little bit about your childhood. And before we start, I do want to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, thank you so much. Because you just had a birthday and I want to wish you a happy I birthday. I did on Monday. It was yes. terrific. Thank yes. you. Did so. Um, can you share with us a little bit about your childhood? Of course, uh, I actually come from a family of educators. Um, my my father was a teacher when I was very young, and later he went into business. and And his uh, my relatives going back to a great grandfather in Italy were were teachers, and th that great grandfather was a professor at the University of Matera. So. Learning was highly valued, very exciting. I had a lot of outdoor experiences when I was young. And honestly, Melinda coming to Vermont felt very familiar to me because I grew up in Connecticut when Vermont, when Connecticut looked like Vermont does now. And it wasn't all built up with those strip malls and things like that. So it really felt so comfortable to be here and, and part of my decision to come. So did you come from a big family? Yeah, well, I, well, I have four. Uh, in my family, but I had a first cousins who I was very close to with 10 children and um, five on the other side. So we were just a very close knit, larger family network. So tell us a little bit about um, who had the most uh, impact and who was most instrumental in your life to, um, to help you to choose your, your path in life that brought you to where you are today. Yeah, it definitely was my father. And I don't know how many women say that about their dads. Uh, good for dads that they do such a good job. But, uh, you know, my father, uh, for each of us, we realized this after he passed away, as my siblings and I were chatting and reminiscing that he had these, uh, what he called object lessons, where he would take a moment when it arrived, and he knew it was a teaching moment, and he would stop everything and just focus on us and individually give us a little anecdote about something and make it come alive. And some of us had the same stories told, but many of us had completely different ones. So we were sharing all of these stories that were seminal moments in our childhood uh, from a man who really understood that taking the time like that pays dividends going forward because we then do it with our children and so on. I love hearing stories about, about fathers' impacts on their daughters. Mm. I think that's really, really special. So what would you say was one of his most important lessons that he taught you, Jennifer? <laughs> well, uh, the first one that comes to mind is one that I've shared often with my own students. And I was learning to drive. I, I had my permit at 15. And I think we had this big old Olds Oldsmobile 98 car that um, it was new at the time, but it's, it's rather large compared to the cars that are around now. And it had a big steering wheel. And I was trying to navigate up a hill toward our house. And my father said, pull over. And um, I looked at him very afraid that he was going to yell at me. And he said, are you driving the car or is the car driving you? And I said, the car is definitely driving me, definitely. And he said, you know, fix it, turn it around. You are the navigator. And I have used that. It, it really was a metaphor for me, though I didn't at the moment. I was really nervous that I was disappointing my dad. But that idea that you have to steer your own ship and that circumstances can kind of push you in directions and then you're not really, you're not making choices. And so I've pulled aside many students over the years who, um, who really were not directing their lives. And this one boy actually painted it on the ceiling of his dorm window. Are you driving the car? <laughs> and I, I, I said, oh no, we're gonna have to repaint that after you leave. But you know, the story, it was just so simple, but it had great impact. It's sort of like the whole concept of initiative. Yes. You know, find, you know, find your path and, 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 and walk your walk. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a beautiful lesson for your father to have given you and one that you can partake with your students. So let's talk a little bit. You are, you say that now people say head of school. Now in my day, it would be headmaster. 
And you are the head of school, the headmaster at Vermont Academy, which is one of just a few private preparatory schools in Vermont. Can you just tell us a little bit about Vermont Academy and why is the school so important to Vermont? Oh, it's a very special place. We are approaching our 150th anniversary in 2026. Uh, we're nestled in Saxons River on a hill and um, we have 450 acres and our whole uh, approach, which we call the Vermont Academy way of teaching and learning is really rooted in the state of Vermont and our land. So we have a strategic plan with, with four pillars and two of them are so relevant to, um, to Vermont and, and they are community and land. So our early founders really laid down that track of learning by doing, of learning in nature, of the importance of community and citizenship and character. And each uh, head of school who came along really carried that mantle forward. I think very often schools frequently try to reinvent themselves with a headmaster's or a head of school's vision, but that has remained constant and that core is there and part of our, our sense of purpose in educating students. We have a beautiful campus. Uh, it's, it's very historic uh, and the view from uh, the playing fields uh, really captures everything that is Vermont, because you can also see Saxons River and the church steeples, and it, it just looks like a painting. So um, our close personal attention is very important as well. We're a small school. We're about 200, and we hope to grow a little bit more to 230 as part of our strategic plan, but we don't want to get very big as some of the other boarding schools are 500, 600,000 students because we really want to be um, continuing that authenticity of relationship with understanding students and really crafting a path for them with them that is distinct and will help them as they pitch themselves to college and into careers. It's so interesting because I just went to my high school, my 55th high school reunion, and we had 57 kids in my graduating class. And, and a quarter of our class, of course, has passed on. But one of the, one of the things that came out of the, of the reunion that we were saying to each other is that we were like a family, that we knew each other. And we were all close. You couldn't have a click because there weren't enough people to be clicky. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how I feel a little bit. But I've been to Vermont Academy many times. My husband is a graduate. Um, yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, he is. And he... And I've asked him because um, he he's been in other he's gone to other schools and I've always said to him, wh wh where do you feel the most um, connected and the most uh, love? And he always says it's Vermont Academy no, that that's I'm where he made, that. his most, he made his most notable friendships. Who, by mm -hmm. the way, he's still very close to today. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for that overview of Vermont Academy. Um, uh, could you share with us a little bit about some of the notables? You've got some very wonderful people who have who have graduated from Vermont Academy. Could you share with us a little bit about those folks? We do. We do. Uh, it, it, nobody's no, more notable than our current students, I have to say, but our, our really most important uh, alumni award is given in honor of Florence Sabin. And I'm proud to say that our school was co-ed to begin with which was really rare uh, in those days. And, and Florence uh, went on to, she had laboratory science here, um, which is also unusual in the late 1800s. I think it was 1898 was her class. And she went on to study at Smith and then to uh, be the first female professor at Johns Hopkins. She founded the Colorado State Healthcare um, and just was really a, a seminal figure. Her statue is in the Capitol as well. Uh, so we have a Florence Sabin Award that we give out for distinguished alumni. Uh, one of our earliest assistant heads of school who came with the then head from Colgate, uh, we had a really strong connection with Colgate in our early years because of that Baptist um, foundation at both schools. And uh, this man, assistant head, was James P. Taylor, who founded the Long Trail, and he actually was creating uh, 
uh, a trail and trailblazing opportunities for Vermont Academy students, trying to get them out of their dorm rooms. So now we are always focused on getting kids away from screens. But if you can imagine, they were, you know, cozy in their dorm rooms with their friends. And he, he thought trailblazing and really getting out and understanding what he called the grand campus of Vermont itself meant for Vermont Academy students would be a wonderful design. And while he was doing this, um, he came up with a larger idea for the long trail and then took it forward and moved up to Burlington. Um, and I have uh, seen some beautiful lantern slides at the University of Vermont um, that Rick showed me, Rick Moulton showed me, um, that capture Vermont Academy students with James P. Taylor. We also have um, Paul Harris, the, the founder of the Rotary Club, graduated from Vermont Academy. And again, there's that Vermont idea of business and um, tinkering and, and getting out in, in the community. So we're very proud uh, there as well. And we have a lot of uh, inventors. Um, Russell Porter uh, created uh, the Palomar Telescope, uh, George Cheney, the Hubble Telescope. Um, and uh, we have our own observatory here, which is wonderful. It's in a barn and the roof slides open and we have telescopes and students looking up at the skies uh, to this day. And the list goes on. And then there are some wonderful, we, Joe Perry graduated from Vermont Academy. And um, well, he may have missed the very ending ceremony, I have to say, but um, so he Joe went Perry, on, Joe we Perry all know from, to, to be Smith, right? the, the lead guitarist for um, Aerosmith, and um, I could go on and on, but there, I'm very proud of, of all of these graduates, and we have a, a wall with their stories uh, in our main hall here in Fuller, um, in that students are often stopping and reading the biographies. Um, they're, they're just so varied and interesting and, um, and inspiring, and they help them to realize that these people were at the same place where they are now, and they have possibilities for their lives that are similar. So how open to the public is Vermont Academy? I mean, if somebody wanted to come down and, and walk through the campus, is it, is it accessible? Yes, it was only during COVID that we really had to have restrictions. And recently we actually just had a big event with Robert Shetterly, uh, painter, uh, creator of the Truth Tellers program on Sunday and Monday. Uh, and he exhibited his works in uh, the, um, uh, Horowitz building and spoke in the Nita Chukas Theater uh, and we showed his film and this was open to the community and we invited, you know, we ha actively advertised to have everybody come and see it. So our arts are thriving here and um, our theater program, our visual arts, performing arts. And so we invite the community in for those things. And then we also have a strong following of uh, local people who come to our games. Um, so that's, that's really fun. We have three basketball players in the pros, uh, at our little school here. We've got Bruce Brown, Jordan, Nora, and, um, Simi Shitu. And, um, we also have Olympians and so on. So it, it's just really great to see this little small powerhouse and, um, we have a fan base. I find it extraordinary that you, that Vermont Academy had, had, was co-ed back in the, in the late 1800s. Yeah. I mean, how, how rare was that? I mean, women, you know, school, school, school teachers were not allowed to be married. I mean, it was, I mean, women were so isolated and, um, and disenfranchised during this period. I mean, how, how rare and progressive was that, Jennifer? It was very rare. I haven't found another school. I'm sure there is if I did a thorough search, but um, I just had a gift from uh, alumnus Art Kelton. He sent me these gorgeous framed pictures of a production in um, 1920, or, oh no wait, it was 1911, but you know, women got the vote in 1920 and it was a play all about, um, they, 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 they had protests around campus with signs saying women need the vote. And then there was a play that was all about that. And I, I didn't notice, I had to look closely. Our director of health services said, those are all men dressed as women. <laughs> so uh, it was a little Shakespearean there. Um, but, uh, you know, they were clearly having a, a lot of fun, but also very dedicated uh, in 1911 to this cause that would not, you know, come to fruition until a few years later. So um, I credit that to the, the, the high-mindedness of these Baptist ministers who founded the school. They were 
um, very progressive. And um, one of them was Levi Fuller, who married into the SD Oregon family in Brattleboro and, um, you know, really uh, gave a lot to build the first buildings at the school. And uh, they were open-minded people. We also were, Melinda, you'll be really interested in this. We were very diverse from the beginning because they gave free access to Vermont Academy to all missionaries' children. So we had children from all over the world from the beginning. And as I was looking at the rosters in the uh, University of Vermont uh, archives, I couldn't believe all the countries that these kids were from. And that's true today. We have uh, students from, I believe it's 22 countries around the world. Um, Do you know how powerful the, that is? I mean, Jennifer, that um, to my viewers, I'm talking to Jennifer Zaccaro, who is the head of school for Vermont Academy. Um, that is just, an, that's an exceptional story. And, um, and, and, and I, wanna, I wanna move on for a, a second. You mentioned the Olympics. And, you know, Vermont Academy is a very strong sports program. And for a school that's small, 200 students uh, could become 230 at some point down the road, but a small school, you win a lot of titles and you've got a, a lot of extraordinary athletes and you have a history of Olympians. Um, so would you share a little bit about that? Yeah, we, I think, Melinda, that it's, it's, it's rooted in the fact that healthy competition is so much a part of our lives here. I think competition can um, have a negative uh, connotation, but not here. We do a strengths finder test when students arrive and they, they discover their top five strengths and kind of work from there to build out their program. It's a Clifton strengths test. And um, we found out that our, our students all share competition as one of their top five. And that also is very rare. So, so they encourage each other. And it could be that you're going to be competitive and strive for your best uh, in your painting class. It doesn't have to be athletics, but um, we encourage each other and it's part of our, our heritage. Uh, Warren Shivers was our first Olympian that I know of. Um, and I wish I had met this man. He was a uh, four event skier but um, I believe he was a jumper and a Nordic competitor in the 1938 Olympics. And he came here with uh, Larry Levitt, who was a Dartmouth uh, scholar athlete and was the head of school for 25 years and um, could be even longer, maybe 28, but uh, Warren uh, really established our whole outdoor program, went back to the legacy of James P. Taylor and the Long Trail, and then built out a ski program. And um, we've had many, many fantastic skiers uh, graduate from Vermont Academy. Uh, our most recent Olympians were Brooke Mooney, uh, who rode on the women's eight in the last uh, Olympics. And she is the daughter of Jim Mooney, uh, former head of school here. And then Simi Shitu, who I mentioned, uh, played for his home country on, on a basketball team. Um, and he is now um, on the Orlando Magic. Wow, amazing. I mean, I saw that when I was down there of all the, all the trophies that you all have won as, <laughs> as a small school. So um, yes. you're doing something right. And these, these uh, young people are getting a terrific education. Um, so you were the first woman head of school, headmaster, yes. of Vermont Academy in 150 years. So what are the joys and the challenges that you are feeling <laughs> in this role? Well, the joys are that I'm really focused on and watching uh, the, the population of girls grow here and thrive. Um, we are really wanting to get to that magic number of 50-50 girls and boys. Um, it is the case that many families don't send their daughters away until sophomore or junior year, so that is um, working against that goal, but at the same time, um, to see our, our girls really thriving is really important to me, and for them to see me in this position helps them to realize possibilities as well. Um, you know, I met, uh, I had the, the luxury of interviewing Madeline Albright at a prior school that I was at, and before she got up on the stage, she said to me, I bet you've been in a lot of boardrooms with a lot of men. And I said, how did you know? <laughs> like some sort of naive woman, but um, you know, she just, she, she's such an inspiration for women. And I'd say the challenges, because you had asked me about that too, are just 
really, um, you know, we've we've had a wonderful um, increase in diversity on our board, and um, you know, getting uh, mindsets to open up beyond maybe what was traditionally here um, when Larry was heading the school and doing such a great job. Um, it was all the school did go to all boys when he was head. And um, so that was about from 1935 until 1976 or thereabouts. Um, he, other heads came after him in that period, but because he had come from Dartmouth and Dartmouth was all boys, um, that was more familiar to him and the school became all boys for a little while. So um, just as any other school would go through transition time in co-education, um, we have had the same, um, but we have that wonderful um, original time uh, that I am pulling back. And Dorothy Levitt, Larry's wife, called it the era of the lost generation. It was a little bit like the Hemingway um, analog there uh, with Hemingway Fitzgerald and Gertrude Stein. Um, so I'm really actively drawing on that, those early days of the school um, to really uh, help everyone to to recall now that we are co-ed and that even though there were those great sort of golden years and a lot of the alumni, uh, uh, the imaginations of alumni who were here when it was all boys, um, we have that dimension now and more. Do you know, a lot happened in American history during that time, which yeah. we were all sort of scratching our heads about. Yes. So, but I think Vermont Academy gets a huge kudo for having starting out as a co-ed school, only, only not being co-ed for a short period of time when our country was going through a lot of weird stuff. Um, Certainly, I was very anti-female and then coming back to it and now having their first female headmaster head of school, which yeah. um, just, you know, warms the cockles of my heart. And I'm sure of many other people out there um, that you're in this role and that you're leading this incredible school. Um, I want to I want I have a lot that I want to talk to you about, but we are getting close to the end of our show. So I want to talk to you about how what do you envision the future of education looking like mm. in today's world of the of the 21st century? That's an exciting question for me. Um, I actually moved from being a full-time teacher into administration because of that question. I, I love tradition, but I also love the future. And right now it's so important for us to inspire our young people because uh, we're divided as a country and we're facing so many um, just negative messages that come all the time on, uh, through the media. And so if you imagine, or if you watch uh, young people when they're hearing these conversations adults are having, their, their heads kind of start to go down. And I want to bring it up and have them realize that they have agency to make a better world. Uh, so I see education, in answer to a question, uh, really moving into even more of what we do best, which is hands-on experiences. So we're trying to develop some opportunities for students to move into communities, solve community problems, work side by side with community organizers, um, learn how to take an idea, a concept into a product. Um, they will. I'm very inspired by Northeastern's co-op program that's been around for a while program. Um, and they have uh, students graduating with a, um, a, um, you know, their resume as well as their transcript. And so they've got work experience and we have many area businesses that are interested in having Vermont Academy students get some work experience as well. So we want to have that practical dimension um, part of students experience. And then they also really need to be nimble and flexible. I know these are terms that are bandied about a lot right now, but um, you have to be able to invent your own job too. You have to be able to manage your own business or manage your life as you're in between uh, jobs because the world is so rapidly changing. Uh, so that kind of social emotional learning and um, wherewithal and confidence is really important as well. Getting, getting, getting kids out of the lecture hall and into the real world. Yes. I so wish I had that in my day. Um, I, this is so exciting. I wish I was young enough to go to Vermont Academy. I, I regret 
that I did not go to Vermont Academy. Um, it, it's such an exciting um, school. And to all my viewers, uh, Jennifer Zaccaro is the headmaster, head of school at Vermont Academy. Jennifer, if, if my viewers would like to get in touch with you or to learn more about Vermont Academy, uh, can you let us, can you tell us how, how they can do that? Absolutely. Uh, if you go to our website, um, you'll see uh, all of our emails and phone numbers, and that's the easiest way to get it rather than translating it right now. But um, I, I'm just so eager to reach out and, and to hear from everyone. I'm just going to a Rockingham Planning Board Commission meeting tonight, and I am actively involved in the village of Saxons River deciding what to do with a building and how to reinvent spaces. So uh, it's it's important to me to be connected with community. I moved into the village from the traditional heads house um, for that reason. Uh, so please do reach out, and that's how to find us. Just go to our website, and and you'll see my email. And what is the website? VermontAcademy.org. Yes. Or yes. Vermont VermontAcademy.org. Go to the website. It's a fabulous website. If you're down in Saxons River, um, stop in to the school. Please do. <laughs> beautiful campus. It's one of the most beautiful campuses uh, and the buildings are extraordinary. And um, so how, we have a few minutes here. I wanted to ask you how you how you coped with COVID because you stayed open. You kept the school open and running, Jennifer. We did. Yes. It's so it's so important for students to have in person instruction um, and and to going through a pandemic when there were so many restrictions. If they were further isolated at home, it would have been so difficult. So I'm so my heart goes out to all the public school teachers and others who had to go through that for longer than we did. Uh, we were just very we were vigilant. We had uh, mask wearing protocols. We tested regularly. Um, and we put in air filtration units in every classroom. We had tents outside, depending the weather, you know. And so we, we just uh, we we had one case the first year of COVID, one case of COVID. The second year, it was when the restrictions were lifted. Um, we had a few more coming back from winter break, but you know, not more than about a dozen. So. Those are really good numbers, actually. Um, and we just basically had a COVID planning team that met once a week. I also was in dialogue with uh, two different uh, heads groups in the Lakes region, which is our athletic competitive league. And then also uh, through ASNI, the Association of Independent Schools of New England. I have loved this half hour with you. I would love to spend a day with you. Um, which someday we will do, but um, I'd love to have you on my show again. Jennifer Saccaro, um, any last thoughts to, uh, to my viewers um, that you'd like to share? Any more words of wisdom? Um, yes, I'll just say that we, we have been historically as a school not waving our banner in the state of Vermont enough, and we are Vermonters, and we love this state and everything that is a part of our educational philosophy is really rooted here. So I just, we're gonna be doing more and more uh, to reach out to the community and make sure you know we're here and that we're accessible for students. Uh, we have some really great ways in which uh, students can come to Vermont um, when they think they couldn't afford it. And so reach out to admissions as well. Vermont Academy has been around for 150 years to my viewers, 150 years. It is a extraordinary school on a beautiful campus and it has created so many wonderful human beings who have done so much to change our world. And so I encourage you to visit their website, vermontacademy.org and to reach out to Jennifer if you're interested in learning more about the school. And um, Jennifer, I just wanna tell you that I am going to paint on my ceiling to drive my own car. I think that yes. message from your father that resonates today with us to, to, to walk your walk and make sure that you, you, you drive your own life. Mm -hmm. And when you get battered about by other things that you steady up and you stay on your own path and stay really true to yourself, that's the message today that you have really left us through your father. And for that, I wanna thank you. Mm -hmm. I wanna thank you for your time and for your dedication to this school. And I'm so proud that you are the first female to, uh, to run Vermont Academy after 150 years. I think that's, that's a milestone and that, um, and that you should be honored for that. And for that, I do honor you. And I'm, and I'm honored to call you my friend.
So well, ditto. And I just want to thank you, Melinda, for all the great work you've done for the state of Vermont. And most recently with that train track going down, I'm just really excited and, and you've done a great job. Thank you for your work. Thank you. So to my viewers, I thank you for being with us today and I will see you shortly. Enjoy the rest of your day.